you remember back when banks used to have pneumatic tubes that would let you deposit checks without ever leaving your car? Well, back in the late 1800s, cities used to have a whole series of these tubes, and businesses would send tube mail back and forth to each other. Molly Wright Steenson's going to take us on a walk down that history and what it was like back when it really was just a series of tubes. Enjoy! Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They've ranged from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate, any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. So former Senator Ted Stevens had it right, just he was 100 years off. It really is a series of tubes, um, or pneumatic tubes. And I'm going to tell you about pneumatic tube systems in Paris, in the United States, and in buildings. So it really is a series of tubes. What you see here is the vaults of the Paris um, sewers from the 1850s. Um, if it weren't for the success of the telegraph, pneumatic tubes wouldn't have existed. Um, this is an engraving showing the telegraph in the central postal office in Paris, but there was network saturation thanks to all the network success of the telegraph. So pneumatic tube messages would be sent. They were called carte telegrams, so they're physical telegrams sent through the late 19th century Parisian tube network, physical analogs, physical messages, digital messages. This is, the, this is a photograph from 1861 of the pneumatic tube, um, of the vaults of the, Paris, um, of the Paris sewers, and the pneumatic tubes that you saw in the first slide lined the tubes of the sewers, made them readily accessible. These two slides are showing you how big the pneumatic tube network got by 1907. So 1888, a couple hundred kilometers, 210 kilometers by 1907. By 1945, 450 kilometers of pneumatic tubes sending messages through Paris. In the steam age, they were run by steam engines. This is the steam installation at the Hotel des Postes in Paris in 1880, showing how the compressed and rarefied air would be, complete, would be created and stored for pneumatic tube purposes. Here are how big they were. In fact, they were 19 meters long and about as twice as high by half as one of these guys whose job it was to maintain them. They would use suction and they would use pressure in order to get the messages and the tube cylinders to go back and forth. In fact, these are tube cylinders. And what you see on one side is one of the original ones made of iron sheathed in leather and uh, and uh, with uh, natural rubber. What you see on the other side is actual physical packet switching for pneumatic tube receptacles. These are how it worked in the steam age in the late 19th century. You would crank open the thing, you'd put in your tube receptacles, you'd send off the, um, you'd turn the crank and off would go the messages and they'd hurtle through the, the underground at 50 miles an hour. Um, these are, this is how big the installations were at the um, Central Stock Exchange. And here you see six and six. And then you see this guy kind of in the background who looks sort of like Waldo. He was big on surveillance. You also see child laborers. Sometimes they got stuck. In order to figure out where the obstruction was, you would fire a pistol into the tube and measure the sound waves, which is what you see here. And you could figure out where the obstruction was within two meters. This is the late 19th century version of error correction. And the next slide here is this kind of fascinating thing that I really love and can't really explain, but it shows elevation and it shows the curvature of the tubes and it shows Paris and all of the electrical apparatuses that were in place again in the 1880s to measure how fast and how much things curved. So this is a, a postal card from the early 20th century showing someone delightfully licking a pneumatic tube missive, the pneumatic tube um, mailbox, and then again, the apparatuses for sending and receiving. However, that's just the Parisian model which sent telegrams. The US model sent first class post, 1893 in Philadelphia, 1897 in New York, and this is what you see are these really big pneumatic tubes that sent mail even over the Brooklyn Bridge until 1953. Um, and you see kind of train cars, and it worked really well. The problem was is that until about 1907, 
the, the um, devices for sending tubes, remember those steam engines we saw, they were enormous, they weighed 3,000 pounds each. However, with the invention of the GSO pneumatic apparatus, it was possible to put the pneumatic tubes on a desktop. So you have 400 pounds, pneumatic tube interfaces, desktop, and what it made possible is what you probably remember when you were a little kid, for pneumatic tubes to go hurtling through your bank, the grocery store you worked at, the department store. And so therefore we have lamps and pneumatic tubes from about 1920, <clears throat> these next couple of shots. And um, you see light filled office spaces, happy people sitting at their desks working. On top here you see stenographers, they could sign anything at an insurance company. At the bottom, if you had pneumatic tubes, I don't know why you'd crowd in all that much, but at that shoe factory, that's what they did. They'd take orders and they'd ship them off and it was all thanks to the pneumatic tubes. Um, anywhere you'd process a lot of paper, pneumatic tubes are good. So what you see on top here is a, almost 136,000 messages a day by, by Sears Roebuck in Chicago. Um, on the bottom you see something about the mechanical messenger is um, everywhere or something at hand. And finally, when I did the research for this at the New York Public Library about lamps and pneumatic tubes, I had to write little things. I brought them up to the, ca the counter and they sent them off in pneumatic tubes. So I'm here to tell you it really is a series of tubes. Thank you.